morning. Thank you, musicians. Man, go ahead and preach tonight. Amen. Uh, tonight. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. The God of the valley, of uh, the mountain is still God in the valley. Amen. When everything seems that going right, Amen. We want to realize that He is God. Amen. That brought us upon this mountain. Amen. But when we get in the valley, we must know that that same God is able to keep us in the valley. Is the God that is able to bring thee to the mountaintop. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Oh, if you have your Bibles, if you turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number, uh, verse number 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Man, we're going to continue talking on the subject of earnestly contending for the faith. Amen. Of watching our souls in this last day. Amen. As I've already told you time and time again, we are living in the last day. Do believe there's going to be a great falling away. Amen. And as there's a great falling away, we must not be of them of them that fall away. The Bible says, Stood broad is the way, and wide is a broad is the way, and wide is the gate which leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in there at but straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life and few there be that find it which means that but that there's a lot that's going to go to hell but not a lot that's going to go to heaven but I want to be the part of that remnant that makes it unto the end that makes it heaven my home even I want to be a part of that remnant that love God and love is appearing tonight amen so we're going to talk again some more on this subject, amen, and we're, I'm just going through different subjects to the Lord, amen, tells me, amen, to stop here pretty soon, we'll go through this subject, amen, of some false doctrine, amen, I don't know exactly when, we're going to talk on some few different things, amen, the dangers of falling into false doctrine, but tonight, we're not talking about that tonight, but here pretty soon we'll get into that, but uh, amen, tonight, I feel I felt led the last Sunday morning, God gave me three messages, amen, I preached one Wednesday, one this morning, and one to, uh, this one tonight, Amen. And um, and uh, so we're gonna pre- uh, we're gonna preach these, Amen. This message, the Lord will help, Amen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse number nineteen. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If you would just pray with me, Lord, I thank you for bringing us here. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to help me, God, to share what you have given me to share, God. Help me to say what you have told me to say today, God. Oh, God, for without you, we are nothing, God. Oh, God, we ask you to move by your power, Lord. Have your will and your way, God. Oh, Lord, help me to communicate the mind of Christ, God. Oh, God, help me speak as of your oracles today, Lord. We love you and we praise you. We ask it all in your name, we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I'm going to preach to you about a servitude, our servant's heart tonight. Amen. We, if we're going to make it walking with Jesus, it's going to be by having a servant's heart. Amen. As I preach to you this morning about being humble, uh, being an humble Christian, not being prideful. You cannot be prideful and be a true servant of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we're going to make it walking with God, It's going to be because we are servants of Him. We serve Him. We are in service to Him in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. Our walk with God hinges on our servitude towards Him. A servitude is a slavery. Amen. It's no longer being your own. I'm going to tell you, we are in slavery unto Christ today. Amen. We we do not belong to ourselves. We we must know that we're no longer our own. First Corinthians six nineteen through twenty. It says, "What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify your own body and your spirit, which is, oh, uh, which are 
gods. Oh, we must know that we are no longer, as Paul wrote these great words here, and ye are not your own. And it says, and we are gods. We must know as servants of God, we no longer make our own choices. We no longer are our own, but we are His and we belong to Him and Him alone. Amen. We belong to God. We are when I dedicated and give my life and told Him He's going to be Lord of my life. I so I gave my life away. I sold my life to Him. He bought me with His precious blood. He when He cleansed me, I become His. I no no longer make my own choices. I no longer go to places that I want to go. I now do whatever He tells me to do. Amen. Amen. Many people don't want to look at uh, Christianity in that way. But Christianity is slavery. I put I posted on Facebook one time a quote about Amen being a slave to God. Somebody said, I don't want to think of myself as a slave to God. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, the Bible teaches that we are His servants and we're bought with a price. We are no longer belong to ourselves, but we belong unto Him. Amen. Why are we are not our own? It's because He bought us. He purchased us with His precious blood. Now, I don't belong to myself. I don't do what I would do. Amen. But I do what He pleases for me to do. Amen. My life is for His pleasure. He created me for His pleasure. Amen. He created me to bring glory unto Him. Amen. And it says in these verses, Therefore glorify God in your bodies. Amen. And my life now, His purpose is to bring glory unto Jesus Christ that He is due. Amen. Because I no longer belong to myself. My purpose and nothing else is to is for nothing else but for His glory and His glory alone. And we must know this. We must know we no longer belong to ourselves. Say, well, I think it should be this way. Amen. That's the problem. Amen. With religious people. Amen. When you take me on the streets, they say, I think, I feel, it seems. Amen. It looks like this. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's like this. The Bible says we no longer are our own, but we're bought with a price. It doesn't matter what you feel anymore. Amen. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. If you love Him, it's not going to be looked at as uh, something that violates you. It's going to be looked at as something Amen. you love to do. Amen. So we must know this. We are under an authority. We are all under authority. I spoke to you Wednesday, since Wednesday night about authority. Amen. But amen, authority is extremely important. In, the, in being servants, every servant has a master. Amen. Our master is the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. We must submit unto His Lordship. Amen. We are under His authority. Right. Amen. Amen. And we're to do whatever He says to do. We're to keep the laws of His Holy Word. Amen. We are servants to Him and we keep His laws. We do what He says to do. Every servant is holy. A servant of the Most High God, a true and faithful servant, is a holy servant. Amen. Amen. He lives a life to please Jesus. Amen. Brother uh, Brother Marty talked about being Christ-like. Amen. If we're a true servant to Him, we're going to resemble Him. Amen. You think of think of Elisha, Elijah, and Elisha. You look at Elisha, Elijah, and Elisha. After after he went down there and through and through there and through that man on Elisha, you don't never read of anywhere that Elijah was without Elisha. He gave himself in service, most of all to God, but into that man of God. Follow that. That man of God made him his life. He went everywhere that man of God went because he said, I'll be your servant. Amen. And sure, he become a mighty man of God himself. Did mighty, many mighty works for God. Did 30, 32 noble miracles where Elijah did 16. Amen. He did many great works for God. It's because he first was a servant. Amen. He still was a servant to God. That's what he did it for. It wasn't because Elijah's power. It was because the power of God. And we must know that we are God's servants. 
Amen. As I mentioned to you already, amen, we must love our Master. And why we to serve Him is because we love Him. Amen. It doesn't, it doesn't, amen. I don't feel violated to say that I don't no longer belong to myself, that my feelings don't matter, no more matter. Amen. I love God, and so therefore I submit to Him. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous unto us. It's not a burden for me to love God because I love God. Uh, for me to serve God and do everything that He tells me to do because I love Him. I don't. I don't. I don't sin because I don't want to sin. Amen. I don't. I, amen. I don't smoke tobacco. But Amen. Why? Because I love God first and foremost, and He tells me not to do it. But I'm going to tell you, I don't have no desire to live in sin. I have no desire to drink alcohol. I have no desire to listen to worldly music. Why? Because I love Jesus and I want to follow His Word. Amen. He, I want Him to be Lord of my life. Control everything about me. Amen. He must control my life and make, uh, do as He wills with my life if I'm going to be a true servant, true and faithful servant to Him. We're going to walk with God. We're going to make it. It's going to be because we're true servants. And He is Lord. Which means He controls our lives. He, and he must control my lives. He, man, I ask Him much, on, uh, many times, uh, pretty regularly on a college campus. Who decided who, if you were you was going to go to college? Who decided what you're going to do in life? Who decided uh, uh, who you're, who's going to decide who you're going to marry? If it's you... Jesus is not Lord of your life. If we're true servants, we're going to let Him make every decision in our lives. And if we don't pray about it, amen, it's because, amen, He is not complete Lord of our lives. Amen. Why, I ask Him, amen, I ask Him who I am to marry. And I do believe God gave me the why that I have. Why? Because I listen to His Lordship. Amen. Amen. I do believe God placed me as pastor of this church. Amen. At that time when God told me in 2011 that I am Liberty, Texas, that I was going to pastor a church. That's not what I desired to do, but I desired to do what He told me to do. And I loved Him. So I yielded to His call. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I have no desire to do that. Amen. Whatever He would have you to do. But if you truly love Him, you're going to desire to do everything that He said to do. Amen. Amen. We must learn. No, we are under authority. I've talked to you about uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord's authority. Amen. And our uh, earthly authority. We are under an authority. We must know. Amen. As Paul said, as I already uh, quoted Wednesday night, but I'll quote it again. Follow me as I follow Christ. He uh, be ye followers of me as I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. If Paul was a follower of Jesus Christ, he told these people that you follow him. Amen. I'm not saying follow follow me as a pastor just blindly. I'm saying as long as a bad preacher stays in the Word of God, lives by this Word, follow Him as He follows Christ. Amen. As I follow my pastor, Amen. As long as he stays, Amen, living according to these scriptures, I am required to follow Him. Amen. And we must be followers of Him. We must be servants in the work of Christ. Amen. We must be servants in His Word. We must be about His business. Amen. And I've quoted it many times in the past. But amen. Jesus, when He was a young man, Amen, they asked Him. He disappeared. They didn't know where He went. They went and found Him. He said, Amen. He said, Wouldn't you know I would be about my Father's business? Amen. That must be the heart of the servant. Wouldn't you know I'd be about my master's business. I would you know that I'm going to do what His Word told me to do. That must be the attitude of Christians. Amen. In the word, amen. In the work of Christ. In the work of the ministry. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if God has called you to do something, you must be doing what God has called you to do. Why? Because you're a servant unto God and He has commanded for you to do it. Amen. If I wasn't preaching this gospel, 
I'll be back soon. Why? Because He called me and He commanded me to do so. Yeah. Amen. I do believe God. Get, amen. I don't believe God just called me to be an evangelist for Him. Evangelize this world. Amen. Share this gospel with a lost and dying world. But I believe He called all the church. But if I cease to preach on the streets and do service for Him as He told me to do service for Him, I would be backslid. Yes. Amen. Because I am not a servant in His ministry. I must be a servant in His ministry. You say, well, that's not my type. I'm not the type of person to tell somebody about Jesus. Well, His Word told you to do so. So you're a servant and you do what He said to do. Amen. We must be willing to be available. We must be available to work for Him. A true servant is available to do whatever God tells him to do. He tells him or her to do. Amen. I do believe God uses women in certain ways. As you know, I don't believe God uses a woman to preach. Amen. But I do believe God uses a woman to do certain things. Amen. I do believe a true Christian and a true servant is to be available for the work of God and everything that He says to do, whether it's cleaning the toilets of the church or if it's preaching the gospel, God has something that you should be doing and you must be available to hear from Him and do what He tells you to do. Amen. Availability is important with the servants. Amen. When God calls on you to do something, don't say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. Amen. Look at Isaiah. Amen. He said, Amen. I sought for somebody to stand in the gap. Or that wasn't him, but he said, Who will go for me? Amen. Who will do this? Amen. And Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. And I tell you, I think that is a stand in the gap and make it the edge. Amen. But he said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. He said, I I'm available to do whatever you tell me to do. Amen. That must be the attitude of Christians. I'm going to be available. I'm going to make myself available. Whether God tells me to go to the backside of Africa or stay right here in Pentecostal Lighthouse and go on the streets. Amen. If He tells you to go on the streets, Amen, which I do believe is that's official ministry, Amen. official ministry of this church, we should all take part in it if we possibly and physically able to do so. But amen, we must be available to do what God has told us to do. Amen. A servant must be willing to do whatever is needed. Amen. Be available to do whatever is needed. You say, well, I want to do this job, but I don't want to do this job. Amen. Whatever God tells you to do. He said, I'm not able to do this. Look at Moses. He said, I'm not able to lead the children of Israel out. Amen. I'm not able. I stutter. I have a stuttering problem and I'm not able to do this. Well, God made a way for him to do it and said well he said I'll just send Aaron to speak for you he said you will you have the availability to do it you have the ability to do it but you must be willing to do it we must be willing to do whatever's needed amen we must be a, a, a willing to be available for him to work amen sometimes it seems to be the dirty jobs amen amen my as I told you my desire was not to be pastor amen I know where what it involves in being a pastor of a church. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I must listen to God. I must do what He told me to do. Amen. Your desire may not be to do the work that God has called you to do, but you must be available for Him to work. Amen. No, and I'm going to tell you this also. The dirty job that nobody wants to do. Amen. There's things around the church that is not glamorous. It's not. People's not going to recognize you for it, but it must be done. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it must be done cleaning around the church. After after church the meals, amen. Somebody has to clean up the stuff after the meals. Amen. It's not a glamorous job to bring desserts after the meals at the church, but it's a great time of fellowship, which I believe is a biblical thing, amen, that we must do, that we break bread together and we fellowship with one another. Amen. It's not a glamorous thing to do that. It's not a glamorous thing to take the trash out of the church. Amen. But it is necessary. 
Amen. And we must be willing to do the dirty jobs. Amen. It seems, well, I don't want to do that. That's hard to do. That's something, amen, that I don't really feel like doing. Amen. But you must be willing to do so. Which leads us to the next thing. Is a servant must be willing to give. Amen. If you're not willing to give, amen. And that's not just finances, but we'll get to finances here in a moment. But if you're not willing to give, you amen, everything. Amen. You can't be a servant for God. Uh, we must be willing to give up all. We must be willing to give all that we are. As I say, we're no longer our own, but we're bought with a price. We must be willing to completely do away. Amen. I'm not, if I'm not willing to give up Josh Herridge, amen, I'm not, I'm not a true servant for him. We must be willing, first of all, amen, as I told you to give up all, but all of ourselves. We must give ourselves completely unto Christ. Ourselves must not be a, must not be a factor. It must be Christ and Him crucified and nothing else. Paul said, I count all things done that I may win Him. I'm going to tell you, if we're going to win Him, we must count everything that we are as a loss for Him. Amen. He, and everything that we are must be lost. Amen. For the excellency of Him. Amen. Everything that we have, everything that we have achieved. You say, well, I don't know. Well, amen. I've achieved so much. Amen. I'm going to tell you, my wife's desire was not just to be an RN. Her desire was to be a nurse practitioner or, or a midwife. Amen. What she has given up that desire. Why? So she can be a godly mother or a man and a godly wife that God has called her to be so she can raise children. Why is that? Amen. Because she's willing to give herself. Amen. There's probably much things that many of us can be doing. Amen. To make greater money. None of us are rich. None of us make good money. But we are willing to do whatever it takes. Amen. Amen. God has blessed. Amen. Bless me. But amen. I'm a no wise rich. But if God tells me to give up everything for Him, I must be willing to do so. Amen. Your will and your desires. Amen. That's part of yourself, but your will and your desires. Your will should not matter. His will should be the only thing that matters. Amen. There's a lot of things in this world that I desire. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I desire to have a thousand acres with a hundred acre lake. Amen. And a, and a, you know, in a, a huge house. Amen. They and have everything that I want. Amen. But amen. Boats. Amen. Amen. Four wheelers, players, rangers. Amen. Amen. Through a five thousand guns, uh, that would be my desire. My desire would be able to go all around. Amen. This country and this world, killing animals. Amen. I desire to do that, but my desires must be put to the side that I may win him, that I may be a servant, that I never kill another animal. But I please God. That's all that really matters. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with hunt, Lord willing, everything works out. I'll be on a deer stand. Amen. Uh, no, well, probably October first, uh, the first uh, part of October this this year. I bought a boat. Amen. But if everything works out that way, but I'm going to tell you that. That must not be my main desire. My main desire. It must be that I'm going to please Him. Amen. We must be willing to give up our time. Amen. The Bible says, Amen. I must do the works of Him that sent me while this yet day, for night cometh, where no man can work. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 16, Amen. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The Bible says life is but a vapor that appeared for a moment, then gone the next. Amen. If life is laid this short, Amen. We don't have a lot of time. We must be using our time. Amen. Time can be the most valuable thing there is. Even more valuable than your finances. Many of us have a very small amount of time. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I have a small amount of time. Amen. My phone rings. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I'm working. My phone rings. Amen. In the middle of the summer, we got a lot going. Amen. But amen. I must make myself available for His 
His will and give my time to Him. Amen. And do what He has told me to do. We must redeem these times because the days, the evil day that we live in. We live in a wicked day and we must redeem the time. Not say tomorrow I'm going to be doing it. You know, as God called me to pray, told me to preach on the streets, I do believe God put it in my heart. Amen. May have put a strong burden for me for open air ministry. Amen. I do believe God told me that I am to do this specifically. This is a part of my calling. Amen. To do. Amen. To work in America. Amen. I told myself many days, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Amen. Until one day God told me, if you don't do this today, you may never do it. And you know what? I stood out there on that Friday afternoon with a megaphone and held that megaphone and preached this gospel. Why? Why? Because I knew that I have to do something now or I may never do it. Amen. If I don't do what He's told me to do and use my time wisely, I'm going to answer to God for it. Amen. And the blood of many will be on my hands. Amen. We must be willing to give our feelings. Amen. You say, well, I don't feel like doing that. That don't feel like something that will be easy. I'm so bashful. Amen. You just don't understand how I feel. Amen. Well, it really doesn't matter how we feel. Amen. If we're not doing what God has told us to do, if we're not truly being service to Him, Amen, and give our feelings away, Amen, and our emotions, bad emotions away, do away with them, we're going to be a castaway. Amen. I'm preaching to you about this and telling you that if you're not a servant, you're not going to make it with God. Amen. If we're not willing to give ourselves, our desires, our time, and our feelings, amen, to to Him, we're not going to make it. We cannot make it. Amen. In this walk with God, amen, we must be doing what He told us to do or we're not going to make it. Amen. If I if I if I live by feelings, how I felt. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it's, I'm scared to death. If I would have been living by feelings that Thursday night, I would have never stepped in that pulpit. I was scared to death. My knees were pretty much knocking. But God told me to preach this gospel. If I wouldn't do what He told me to do, Amen. I'm going to let something else slip. Amen. My prayer life's going to slip. If I let my ministry slip, my prayer life will slip. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you are not going to feel like praying. Your flesh is very rarely or your flesh will never feel like praying. You're very rarely going to be excited. Amen. About prayer time. Amen. Where flesh will will not be excited about prayer time. But the Spirit must take over. As the Bible said, the the flesh is indeed weak, but the Spirit is willing. Amen. We must not go by what this flesh feels, but we must go by what He feels. To be a true servant of God we must give up our feelings that we may win Him. Amen. We must be willing to give our finances. Amen. When you reach to people's pocketbooks, people don't like it. Amen. Amen. I do believe all Christians are required to give tithe. That is 10% of your income. I do believe that's a biblical requirement. People's going to say that's a part of the law. Actually, that that was before the law. Amen. Amen. So, amen. We, oh, amen. You want to know where tithing is biblical? We can go through it, amen, a little later and show you where tithing is biblical. That's not to make the preacher rich, but that is a biblical mandate to do what God has told us to do. I do believe if you're not giving 10%, you're a thief and a robber. That's what the Bible teaches. If you're not giving at least your 10% unto God, amen, you're not fulfilling the law of God. That's what the Bible teaches. Amen. Amen. Now, you'll read on Facebook all these crazy guy people will tell you tithing's not biblical. That's just to make the preacher rich. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, preach is not making me rich. Preaching don't give me, make me a living. Amen. I work a full time job to make a living. But I'm just going to preach what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the Bible says. He may be willing to give to missions. Amen. We should be willing to give to help people spread this gospel. 
gospel. Hey, man, I do believe it's a Christian, a Christian's duty to bear you one of those burdens. Is that preacher wants to go share this gospel? No, no true man of God should ever have not be able to do what God is calling to do because of lack of finances. Hey, man, a Christian should give to that. Hey, man, helping others. Hey, man, you say, well. God give me this money. They need to get a job. Yes, absolute people need to get a job. But he, man, the Bible says if a man don't work, he shouldn't eat. I am an advocate for men working hard. Amen. But if somebody is impossible for somebody to help themselves, we must be willing to be that person that stands in the gap and helps them do. Amen. Well, it helps them along. Amen. Somebody may be lost their job, looking for another job, intently looking for another job. Amen. Vigorously looking for another job. Amen. It just needs a little help. Amen. And us as Christians are required to do so as a servant of God. If you're not willing to Amen. To turn your finances loose. Amen. You're not willing to serve God. Amen. Your, your finances are no longer yours. As I told you, you're no longer your own. It's God's for Him to decide. If God tells you to do it, Amen. Amen. You must do it. Now, I do believe you should take care of your family. Amen. To do, Amen. As God demanded you to do, He commanded for you to do. If a man don't supply for his family, he's worse than an infidel. Amen. I don't believe tithing is an option. Amen. That 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 is the uh, that is the base that ten percent. But I do believe, Amen. You should supply for your family. But if you're supplying for your family, Amen. You must do, Amen. What God has told you to do. The ministry will cost you. It will cost you greatly, Amen. You may you may have to give up a good job, Amen, to do the ministry. But whatever it takes, you may have to live from paycheck to paycheck. You may have to, Amen, uh, do uh, uh, do a what that was on, but. Amen. You should be willing to do that. Amen. We must be faithful servants. Amen. Faithful to what He has told us to do. Because Christ is coming after faithful servants. As I've told you many times before, God is not a man that He should lie, nor the Son of Man that He should repent. He's not going to say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant, if you have not been a good and a faithful servant. Amen. Hey, hey, if we're going to make it until the end, we're going to do it to the end. We're going to have to be faithful and true servants of the Most High God. That's a requirement that we do such a thing. Hey, man, if we're going to do it to the end, it's because we have obeyed God in everything that He said to do. We're going to, that we're doing all that He has called us to do. Stand to your feet tonight. Amen. Let's come in these altars tonight and seek the face of God tonight.